Good day class and welcome to Colligative Properties of Solution. Colligative Properties of Solution are the properties that result from the reduction of the chemical potential of the liquid solvent as a result of the presence of a solute. Because what happens when you make a solution is you break the interaction of your pure solvent and insert a solute. Therefore, you are breaking the interaction between your solvent molecules by inserting a solute molecule. Therefore, it results in our colligative properties of solution. Colligative properties of solution is dependent on the number of solute particles and not on the nature of the solution. In here, we will have a general assumption that we are dealing with a solute that is non volatile. So we have four colligative properties of solution. Number one is vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure. For the rest of this topic, we will learn why your solute solvent interaction results in this four properties under colligative properties of solution. First, we will look into your vapor pressure lowering. For vapor pressure lowering, it is always the case that the vapor pressure of the solution is lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So, this is because adding a solute decreases the vapor pressure of the solvent. Non-volatile solutions does not have a measurable vapor pressure. Remember that our assumption is non-volatile solutes only. And this non-volatile solutes doesn't have a vapor pressure. Thus, when we add them to something that has a distinct vapor pressure, it can lower the entire vapor pressure. We will see later how this goes when we start looking into the calculations involving vapor pressure lowering. Vapor pressure lowering runs under Raoult's law. Raoult's law states that the vapor pressure of a solvent over a solution P1 is given by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent P1 degree or P1 naught times the mole fraction of the solvent in the solution X1. So, P1, or the vapor pressure of a solvent over a solution, is equal to the mole fraction of solvent multiplied to P1 naught, which is the pure solvent. In a solution containing only one solute, X1 is equal to 1 minus X2, where X2 is the mole fraction of the solute. Therefore, the vapor pressure lowering is equal to x2 multiplied to p1. To illustrate vapor pressure lowering, let's use this as an example. So calculate the vapor pressure of a solution made by dissolving 218 grams of glucose in 460 ml of water at 30 degrees Celsius. What is the vapor pressure lowering? The vapor pressure of pure water at 30 degrees Celsius is 31.82 millimeter mercury. Assume that the density of solution is 1 gram per ml. So let's first write our given. Mass of solute is equal to 218 grams with its molecular weight at 180.2 grams per mole. The mass of your solvent is unknown, but we do have our volume, which is 460 ml at a density of 1 gram per ml. We also have the vapor pressure of your pure solution at 31.82 millimeters mercury. Our unknowns or our required are first, the vapor pressure of the solution. And second is vapor pressure lowering. Let's write the equations that we will be using. For the vapor pressure of solution, it will be X1 times P0. 
and then we already have your e not we already have your pure solvent so we don't have your x1 how do we calculate for x1 it is n solute or n solvent rather all over the total number of moles and we still don't have this total uh, moles of solvent or even the total moles of our components let's calculate for the moles of solvent first so to calculate for the moles of solvent we need the mass in grams and then our molecular weight we don't have the mass in grams but we have the volume so we will use that 460 ml multiplied by our density divided by 18 which is the molecular weight of water so this the answer for this one is 18. now let's calculate for the n or the moles of solute so the, the numerator is 218 grams divided by 180.2 grams per mole and then if we calculate it we will get 4 so we already have the values of your ends and we can use this to calculate your x1 so our x1 would be Now we can use this to calculate for our P or the vapor pressure of the solution. The answer would be 30.2518 millimeters mercury and to calculate for the vapor pressure lowering we just have to use this formula x2 multiplied with your p naught or 1 minus x1 times p naught so we have And these two are the answers for our required, which is vapor pressure of the solution and the vapor pressure lower. Now let's move on with the next colligative property in our list, which is boiling point elevation. So what is boiling point? In our lesson one, we learned that the boiling point is the temperature in which the vapor pressure of your solution is equal to the vapor pressure of the environment or your surroundings. If adding a solute lowers the vapor pressure, then how will this affect the boiling point? We learned earlier that your addition of solute lowers the vapor pressure and in turn this will affect the boiling point since we said that the boiling point is the temperature in which your vapor pressure is equal to the vapor pressure or the pressure of your surroundings. 
let's look at the phase diagram of water. So let's assume that at 1 atm, your pressure is, or your boiling point rather, is at this point. Since you will lower the vapor pressure of the liquid, your entire phase diagram will shift downwards. And once the shift has been done downward, this will lower the entire phase diagram, resulting in a wider area for the liquid section on your phase diagram. Therefore, the shift of your boiling point will be from this point to your next point over here, resulting in a higher boiling point. And this area over here will be your boiling point elevation or your delta dB. I'm giving you around 10 seconds to process that one. According to the definition, the boiling point of the solution Tb minus the boiling point of the pure solvent Tb0 is equal to your boiling point elevation. The value of delta Tb or your boiling point elevation is proportional to the vapor pressure lowering and so it is also proportional to the concentration of the solution in molality. So, since your delta Tb is directly proportional to your molality, once we remove your proportionality symbol, it will be replaced by your proportionality constant, Kb, and you will have this equation, which is delta Tb is equal to Kb times molality, wherein Kb is the molal boiling point elevation constant or your ebullioscopic constant. In relation to your boiling point elevation, we have your freezing point depression. Freezing point depression or your freezing involves the removal of energy to transition from a disordered state to an ordered state. For this to happen in a solution that has a greater disorder, more energy needs to be removed, thus a lower freezing point. Remember that since we have a solution that has a higher boiling point, this will suggest that your solution has a great disorder. And to remove your greater disorder, you need to have lower freezing point. Freezing point depression is defined as the freezing point of the solution, Tf, minus the freezing point of the pure solvent, Tf. The value of Tf is proportional to the concentration of the solution in molality, which is delta Tf is directly proportional to M. Again, once we remove the proportionality symbol, it will be replaced by your proportionality constant Kf. Therefore, delta Tf is equal to Kf multiplied to your molality. But what is Kf? Kf is the molal freezing point elevation constant, or we refer to it as your cryoscopic constant. I have a question. Why do we use molality when dealing with the colligative properties of solution, boiling point, and freezing point? This is actually simple. It's because molality is the only expression of concentration that is not affected by your temperature. Know that your molality is equal to moles of substance all over the kilogram of solvent, while your molarity is equal to the moles of your solute per liter of solution and your normality is equal to the equivalence per liter of solution. And we know that liters is an expression of volume and we have your volume in our density, which is density is equal to mass over volume. And we know that your density is, an, is in an inverse relationship with your temperature. Therefore, if you increase the temperature, your density will, low, will lower. And once your density will lower, 
at constant at constant mass this would suggest that your volume is increasing thus we cannot use your molarity and your normality when we are dealing with boiling point and freezing point since this two involve temperature Now we move on with your osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the pressure required to stop osmosis. This is expressed in the formula pi is equal to mRT, wherein m is the molarity of the solution, r is our gas constant set at 0 0.08205 liters atm per kelvin mole, and T e is our temperature expressed in kelvin. What is osmosis? Osmosis is the spontaneous passage of pure solvent into a solution separated by a porous membrane. Your porous membrane is a semi-permeable membrane which allows the passage of solvent but blocks the passage of solute. And our osmotic pressure is the pressure that stops this osmosis. Osmotic pressure, we have your isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic. When we talk about isotonic, this is when the solutions are of equal osmotic pressure. Hypertonic is when the solution outside has higher concentration and the other does not. Therefore, there will be a continuous osmosis to balance out your concentrations. And this one, we have your hypotonic wherein this is the more dilute solution. Tea making or tea steeping is a common phenomena that uses osmosis or it's a common phenomena where we can observe osmosis. Our tea bag is our semi-permeable membrane. It allows the passage of water but it does not allow the passage of your dried leaves or dried flowers. But the content or the flavor of your tea will also pass through your semi-permeable membrane along with your water. Therefore, we can say that the inside of your tea bag is concentrated and outside is dilute. Therefore, to balance it out, there will be a diffusion through this osmosis. And that ends our lecture on the colligative properties of solution. I will see you in the next video for the sample problems of this topic. See ya!